Hi, it's Jane here from craftforjane.co.uk and today I'm bringing you a special edition, so a winter edition of the Ritter chocolate and I've made its own little box. It's a winter Ritter chocolate box. I've used um, this this um, particular edition is the coconut macaroon and I'm using the mint macaroon paper because it is the closest paper that I could find to match. Uh, so as soon as I saw this chocolate, immediately I thought of this paper um, at this cardstock and I thought of the Whimsy and Wonder paper, which is just here. Uh, the beautiful, beautiful, um, unusual colours. It's got blues, pinks, greens in it. Uh, so more unusual for Christmas, um, but it works so well. So I'm going to be making this box for you today. This is my cardstock my mint macaroon and I have cut this to nine and a half inches by five inches and um, for all of my measurements including my metric measurements in centimeters as well as my imperial in inches um, please uh, follow the links to my blog which are in the description below so on the long side I'm going to score it three and three quarters four and a quarter eight sorry eight and eight and a half and then on the short side I'm going to score it at half and four and a half there we go so I'll get rid of my scoreboard and I'm gonna get out my trusty paper snips and I'm gonna start cutting before I start my burnishing so i'm gonna cut into these little pieces and mitre them just there and with this one just here oops cut on the wrong side i'm going to take this one out because this is going to be the flap of the lid so I'll just make sure i actually i'm going to take those out completely we get very excited there. So I'm taking this out completely. Sorry to confuse you. If you do want tabs at the top where your lid is, I don't because the chocolate fits so snugly. But if you did want tab, uh, tabs just here, you'd actually not want your tabs coming out this way. You'd want them coming out this way. So you'd be cutting your tabs into the box that way. If you were just here. Um, and that would be if you were using something that didn't completely fill the space or if you're using loose things like you were going to put coins or uh, little chocolates in here, you might want tabs then because the tabs at the top um, help keep the flap, uh, the flap that you close the chocolate box with in place. But if you've got something that fits snugly, you don't really need those tabs. So that is all the cutting. I'll put that on there for the people who like to just um, pause at this moment just to make sure they're cutting it uh, correctly. And then I'm going to burnish. So I'm going to burnish just along here. And just here. And then obviously the sides as well. Now you can leave this like this or you can uh, snip the edges of your lid. Make sure I'm going to cut this one away because I do like it to be neat. So you, I could have pulled that off, but sometimes you get left with straggly bits of cardstock if you do that. So I often will come along afterwards and just double check. See, I've just pulled that one off and you can see the little snaggly bit there. So I'm just going to snip that off as well. So with this lid of the box here, you can you can just simply cut a mitre, but I do have a um, corner rounder. So I'm actually going to use my corner rounder and just make it quite a neat corner. Okay. So um, because if I show you the back of my box, um, I often will put a little thumb notch just there so you can open. Uh, so I'm going to get out a circle punch. Um, we don't actually sell these punches anymore, but you can get something similar. So the one I'm using is the one inch one. And I'm just going to roughly work out where the centre is and just notch a small, a 
small thumb hole just there. Okay, so this box is going to close like that and it's going to open at the side. Open, sorry, it's going to open at the top. So it's going to be like that and then it'll open at the top just here. So therefore I'm going to open it back out and I want my DSP, if it is a directional pattern, to be to be this way round. The pattern that I'm choosing is technically, I suppose a little bit directional, but you could get away with putting it upside down. I don't think people would mind too much. So I've used some silver cardstock, specialty cardstock as a matte layer, and then my DSP layer on top from the Whimsy and Wonder. So my silver foil layer is three um, and five eighths of an inch by three and seven eighths of an inch. And my DSP layer is three and a half inches by three and three quarter inches. So I'm just going to use some of my Tombow liquid glue and I'm going to pop some glue on. Lovely. And I will make sure the direction is the right way around and I'll pop this on in preparation. So you can do this now or afterwards, but I just find it easier sometimes to glue it on when it's all flat so I can press it down. Use my bone folder and make sure it's got great attachment and doesn't slip around them. So you can use wet glue or you can use tear and tape or you can use Stamp and Seal Plus for this bit. So I'm going to use my Stamp and Seal Plus. So I'm going to want my tabs here to glue to each other. So I'm going to stick on all of my tabs. There we go. Just check I've got that in there. Lovely. Okay. So I am just going to put my tab in and start with this section of the box, which I'm just doing. I'm going to build the bottom part ready. So I've attached those two and I've attached those two just there. So then I will bring in this section. I'm just going to gently fold it over and close it there and fold it over and close it there. I have my box shape just there. So now I'm going to put my chocolate inside the box. This is the moment of truth to make sure it fits snugly and it does. And I'm just going to put in my slap, my little flap piece here to make sure my box closes completely. So that's a nice sealed box. So that's that there. So next I'm going to use my ribbon to tie around the outside. So I've chosen to use the two ribbons because I think they both complement this lovely. One of them is the um, sheer ribbon in Pool Party. And then I've got the, um, the glittered organdy ribbon. So I think these two together really complement the project. So I will tie this around. Probably going to go underneath to start with, roughly in the centre. There we go. And I do tend to try and keep things on the spool when I'm tying knots, just to try and minimise my wastage. It doesn't always work, but fingers crossed. Let's see how we fare. So I'm going to try and do a bow on camera. So just do that one. And then these two. I just think this gives a nice whimsical sort of look. Uh, it's definitely my word of the month, I feel, whimsical at the moment. There we go. And that is pretty cute with the two tails coming off. And I will snip this as well. And I might shorten this one a tiny bit. Make sure these two are connected there. Snip that one just there. So I can now gently, sorry I'm off camera, gently try and straighten them up a little bit at the back and then on the front they will be in place. Lovely. You can sort of move the bows apart just to make it, it almost seems a bit bigger. You could use one 
um, ribbon here wouldn't be an issue, but I quite like the using the two because I just think it adds more depth and sort of makes the bow look even bigger and grander. So I'll move these two out of the way. So next I am going to use part of the complementing suite, which is these wonderful snowflakes in this lovely iridescent white and they sort of go beautifully. So I'm probably going to pop that underneath about here. So it's just ever so slightly coming off, coming off. And I'm only going to glue that in the centre. So I'm going to use my liquid Tombow glue. Just like that. Um, I'm gently going to ease it in. And just have it a little bit, tiny, tiny bit off the edge in one or two places. There we go. So that's there and that is quite subtle, but you can just see it just there. And then next, I'm going to make my cute little um, center uh, sentiment piece just here. And I'm using the dies from the Christmas season, which are these ones just here. And the sentiment I'm going to use is a sentiment from wishing you a joyful Christmas and that's from words of cheer and I'm going to be stamping it in mint, mint macaron, macaroon macaron and I am going to be using the silver foil as my outer layer as well so I've done both of those in advance and I'm going to pop these on using my self-adhesive uh, foam mouth my stamping dimensionals <laughs> so I think I use them on almost every project so I've got some here I'm just going to pop them along the edges so it does sort of um, leave the ribbon area a bit clearer. And then I'm going to try and take off my backs. All of those are off, lovely. And then I'm going to try to roughly centre it. It doesn't have to be precise because it's got the bow and that sort of takes some of the element away. There we go. So that's there. And then to top it off, I think I'm going to be using, I use them here. I'm going to be using this colour here from the Holiday Rhinestone Basic Jewels. One of the most versatile jewels that we have I think this is because of all the different colours. Now you can get the plain one, you can use your stamp and write markers to colour them. Um, however I, I just love the clarity of these. So I'm going to get my pick tool and I'm gonna pick some of these. So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably replicate where they were. So there was two over here. Maybe I'll put one there this time and Put two over here. There we go. So that is my winter Ritter chocolate box using the Whimsy and Wonder DSP. Um, so I, you can see I've used the different pattern here, um, but um, I'm not sure which one I prefer. I think I prefer this one because I feel like the green goes with the mint macaroon better. Um, but you've got the green here with the bow as well, so I don't, it's hard to tell. You tell me, which one do you prefer? Um, they are pretty similar, so um, it might be a difficult choice. Uh, so I'm. thank you very much for watching. Um, my YouTube channel subscriptions up to 200 lovely subscribers now, so I'm 20% of my way to my goal of 1,000, uh, so thank you very much. And I do hope you're enjoying the material I'm putting out. And please, if there's anything you like, uh, feel free to message me and request something if you've got some ideas of stuff that you would like me to do. One of my lovely customers has asked if I can maybe do some tags. So um, I've got some tags coming out on my blog this Sunday and I'll certainly look to maybe making some a, vi a video of maybe some more elaborate tags as well. And we do have a card kit, a uh, Christmas tags card kit uh, coming out as well. So I'm going to order that and I will um, maybe make some tags and cards and things like that, alternative projects with that card kit as well to show you. So if you do have any ideas of things you'd like me to do, please feel free to message me. I, um, if you would, again, like I normally say, if you would like to shop with me, I would be absolutely honoured if you do not already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Um, please follow the links below to shop with me. If you'd like to join my team, again, you can follow the links below or reach out to me and we'll have a chat. So I'm going to say bye for now and happy crafting, everyone.